Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to do hydrostatic weighing. So this is also known as underwater weighing and it's a technique for measuring body composition of, the, of a human body. All right, so with this we're going to be able to assess somebody's body fat percentage and this is a really good technique for doing that. So this is, uh, was once the gold standard for measuring body fat composition um, or body fat percentage. And so everything used to be compared to this to see if they were accurate. So nowadays we have a couple other techniques that are a little bit more accurate than this or a little bit more stable than this. So we have MRI machines as well as DEXA machines, which is a type of x-ray type machine. Um, but those are typically only going to be used in hospitals or very high-end research facilities. All right, so hydrostatic weighing, like we're going to show you today, is uh, much more common in an exercise or sports environment. All right, so we also have a special guest who's going to be our participant today. We have Isadora Williams, who was a member of the last uh, figure skating team for the Olympics for the country of Brazil. Um, so she is going to be our participant today. So before you fill up the tank, make sure that you clean the tank out. And usually what we do is just take a, a bottle that has 10% bleach um, and just spray the inside of the tank. Uh, give it 15 minutes or so for the, uh, the bleach to do its job and kill any bacteria in the tank. And a lot of that bleach is going to dry up during that period of time, and that's what you want. And then after that's been done, simply spray the inside of the tank off real well with the hose that it's going to be used to fill up the tank. And that's going to rinse any of that bleach residue down the drain. So setting up in order to do an underwater weighing procedure takes a little bit of time, um, mostly because you have to fill up the water tank, which is a fairly large tank. So you're going to see here, um, first you have to close the valve on the tank, then you have to uh, turn on the, the nozzle to allow water to flow in. This is going to take probably somewhere around two and a half to three hours to fill up the tank. And what most likely is going to happen is you're going to see um, the, the water overflows a little bit, which is fine because this particular tank has an overflow uh, valve to it that allows water to go out and, and just exit right into the drain. So if you overflow this tank a little bit, that's okay. You don't want to let it happen for a very long period of time just in case there's a clog in the system or um, you're just wasting water, water otherwise. Um, but if a little bit of water overflows, that's okay. Um, but what you're going to want to do is let a little of that water out to make sure that when a person gets in, there's not too much water in that's going to cause it to quickly go over the, the walls of the tank. So just simply open the valve for a few seconds, let some of that water drain out so there's a, a couple inches below the, uh, the emergency drain valve, um, and then you should be good with uh, how much water is in the tank. Also make sure that when you're filling up the tank that for at least a portion of the time you're probably going to want to use hot water only so that the, the water in the tank isn't miserably cold. So if you're going to turn both hot water and cold water on at the same time, it's going to tend to be a little more on the cold side and you want to make sure that it's a decent temperature for your participant. So once you have the tank filled up with, uh, with water and it's at an appropriate level, you're going to hang the seat inside the tank. So we don't want the, the seat hanging all the time because it will slowly pull on that, um, that load cell that we're using to measure the force of their body pushing down. Um, and that's just something that's going to cause wear and tear over time. So make sure that you take this off at the end as well. Then you're going to take um, the plug for the the box associated with that load cell that's going to give the readout and you're going to plug that into the wall which is going to be how it turns on. Take the weight belt that's eventually going to be strapped around the waist of the individual and the purpose for that is to make sure that they sink in underwater and they don't float. Um, but anyways, you're going to take that weight belt, you're going to put it over one of the bars of the chair of the, uh, of the seat that's in the water and you're going to then zero out the machine. So this tells the machine this is how much weight that we're expecting that is not of the uh, person we're testing. All right, so that's very important for you to do that. So then you want to are going to want to take that weight belt back off, put it somewhere where it's easy for the participant to get to it whenever they um, come to actually do the measurement. So you're also going to um, measure the temperature of the water. So this entire test relies on the fact that water has a certain density in that the human body is going to have densities that vary within it. So uh, fat tissues are less dense than water, where lean tissues are more dense than water. 
All right, so we have to know how dense the water is in order for all this to be calculated appropriately. And unfortunately, water changes its density depending on the temperature of that water. So you have to measure the temperature of the water. Typically, you're gonna do that in degrees Celsius. And uh, then you're going to look up in some sort of table what the specific gravity of the water is. So in other words, how dense that water is. And that's gonna go into our equations as well. All right, so once you have all that set up, so now the, uh, the water tank is filled, you've zeroed out the weights of the seat in the belt, you're gonna have the participant come in, you're going to measure their weights, and you're going to measure their force vital capacity. So you're gonna do that using some version of a spirometer. Here we're just gonna use a simple windmill spirometer, and I've already made a video showing how to use that spirometer as well as how to use the weight scale. So um, go ahead and look for a link below this video um, on how to do those if you don't know how to do those. Um, but what we're gonna do is you're eventually gonna take that weight of the individual and you're gonna put it into a calculation in order to assess um, their body fat percentage or really the body density first. You're also going to take that uh, force of vital capacity, so how much air they can get in and out of their lungs when they breathe in and out as deeply as they can. And you're gonna put that into another equation where it's gonna calculate residual volume. All right, so residual volume is the amount of air in the lungs that you can't blow out no matter how hard you try. And so when they go underwater and they're gonna blow out their air, they're gonna have some air left in their lungs and that is their residual volume. So we simply do an estimate calculation based on whether they're a male or a female to uh, determine how much residual volume is there. All right, so once you have the weight of the individual, you have an estimate of their residual volume, you know what the temperature of the water is, it's time for the participant to go into the tank. So have them walk up the, the ladder of the tank and then walk down the ladder on the, on the inside of the tank as carefully as possible to make sure that they don't slip and fall. Um, and then once they're in the water, have them just submerge themselves completely in, under the water. This is going to, one, just kind of get, get it over with so that they're completely wet. And two, you need to make sure that they get all air out of their clothing so that that doesn't add to the buoyancy. All right, so any air that's trapped in their clothing or trapped potentially in their hair uh, is going to add to their buoyancy and make them look like they have more body fat than they actually do. So just have them go under, get completely wet, completely drench all their hair as well, um, and then have them strap the weight belt around their waist um, so it's snug enough where it's not gonna fall off, but not so snug that's uncomfortable. Once they've done that, have them sit on the chair of the, uh, of the, the, the tank that's in the tank, and they're going to want to sit all the way back, at least in this particular tank, you're gonna to wanna to sit all the way back so that the, their knees, the back of their knee is against the bar of the chair, and that's gonna put their butt actually off the back end of the chair, and that's okay, because they're going to eventually lean forward, and so if you don't do that, if you don't put some of their weight on the back of the chair, when they lean forward, they're gonna fly forward too much. So you're gonna want their butt all the way off the back of the chair, their knees against the bar, and you're gonna have their feet on the bar underneath them and have them grab the chair next to their legs. Don't have them grab the, the rails of the chair on the sides. The reason for this is they can't touch the walls or the floor of the tank. If they're touching any of those um, walls, it's going to potentially decrease how much force they're pushing down with, which is gonna make them look uh, lighter which means they're um, gonna be calculated as having more body fat than they actually have. So make sure they're not touching anything other than the chair when they're in the tank. And then what you're gonna have them do when they're ready is to go under the water, so completely submerge every bit of their body and blow out all the air they can get out. So at this point, the only air left in their lungs should be that residual volume that we already estimated. And then you're going to look at the screen where the numbers are being displayed for how much they weigh in kilograms, and you're going to try your best to estimate where, uh, what the average value is that's being displayed on that screen. You're gonna see that it does bounce up and down quite a bit. Typically what you wanna do is you wanna look for um, there to be sort of numbers in the middle that are the most stable that you're seeing the most often, or what you can do is once there seems to be a, a little bit of a pattern to the bounce and it's not completely erratic, you're gonna to try to see what the sort of top and the bottom end of that bounce is and then estimate what's in the middle and that's going to be typically about what they weigh underwater. All right, so in order to minimize how much bouncing those numbers are gonna do, when they go underwater, you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna grab the two bars of the, of the uh, seat and you're just gonna hold it steady while they're blowing out all their air. 
once they've blown out all their air, you slowly let go of that seat and that's going to um, allow you to actually do the measurement. But doing that is going to prevent that chair from rocking back and forth too much, which means that the numbers will be a little bit more stable after doing so. So at the end of the trial, whenever you have established a number that you believe to be the average number you're seeing on, displayed on the screen, you're simply going to knock on the side of the tank so to tell the participant you have a number they can come up. All right, so once that happens, the trial's over. You're gonna to wanna to do at least a few trials of this. All right, so the purpose of doing multiple trials is so you can make sure that your numbers are repeatable. All right, so if you're getting numbers that are all over the place, something is not going right. So either they're not blowing out all their air every trial, or you're allowing too much movement of the chair and you need to hold a little more firmly when they're blowing out their air. Again, remember, you have to let go before you do the actual measurement. All right, so do several trials, at least three, and then do as many as what's required to get a handful that are close together, um, giving you similar numbers. So once you've done all the trials you need and you've written down the, the average uh, weight for each of those trials, or the average of the numbers that you see, you're going to allow the person to get out of the tank because their job is done now. All right, so they can get off the seat, they can remove the weight belt, Typically, I just have them hang that over the side of the, uh, the, the tank and then have them uh, start to walk out of the tank. Make sure that you remind them that it's going to be very slick when they're walking out as well as when they get onto the floor um, next to the tank. So have them be as careful as possible so that they don't slip and fall. As they're coming out of the tank, it's also um, a polite thing to do to give them some sort of towel so that they can start drying themselves off. So when you're all done with all your measurements, uh, simply drain the tank, remove the, the chair and place it off to the side so that it's not pulling down on that load cell. And then you can uh, unplug the, uh, the measuring device so that it's not on uh, after you're finished with it. All right, so once you've collected all the numbers that you need to, you need to start doing some of the calculations. So the first one I have here is the residual volume estimate calculation. And for this, you need to uh, use a different calculation, whether the person is a, a man or a woman. And so with this, you simply uh, put in their for force vital capacity that you get from the spirometer, and then you multiply that by a constant, and that's going to estimate their force or their residual volume from that. So the next calculation that we need to do is to uh, calculate the density of the water or the specific gravity of the water. And so you can use this calculation to do that. It makes uh, some assumptions that I'm not going to go over here. Um, or you can simply look in a table like this one here where you're going to be able to look for um, what the density of the water is at a specific degree Celsius. All right, so the next calculation that you need to do is the actual calculation to get body density from the, uh, the weight of the person when they are dry. So you see that twice in this equation, the weight of them when they are under the water, as well as the density of the water, um, which is that last calculation. And then the, here is where that residual volume from their lungs comes into the equation as well. All right, so this will give you body density. This is not body fat percentage. This is going to be some number that is uh, typically right around one, so just above or just below 1.0 um, with, with several decimal points. When you're doing these calculations, especially this one here, keep as many decimal points as you can. Do not round anything until we get to this last calculation, which is the um, body fat percentage calculation. So with this, we're uh, specifically showing here the Siri calculation. Um, there are other calculations out there that will go from body density to body fat. Um, but after you've calculated body fat in this, calc in, in this equation, that's when you can then go ahead and round your numbers to the nearest whole number, or this is probably okay to round to uh, a single decimal point. All right, so that was a really quick overview on how to do hydrostatic weighing. Um, it is a fairly complex procedure. It takes a little bit of practice in order to uh, be very good at it. Um, but it is an extremely accurate measurement of body fat percentage. As I mentioned, it was for a long time the gold standard and still can be used as the gold standard um, if need be. Um, but it is a really, really good measurement for uh, body fat percentage. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, you can put your comments or questions below and I'll try my best to get back to you. Otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.